Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of The Democratic View. I'm the hostess. My name is Phyllis Italiano. And today, we have two people as our guests, which is kind of rare for us. And uh, we actually, they're two guys from Southampton. That's right. Our, our sister village, or town, I should say. And we have Robert Gresnick, and if I didn't remember his name, it's got right there on right his. Right there, boy. Right I there on his, there. his. That's that's by law. I have to wear that name in the pharmacy. Oh, is that a? Oh yeah, the law says you have to wear a name tag. But instead of wearing a name tag, I had it embroidered on my jacket. So oh, I that was worry smart. About a name tag. That's, that was very smart that's of you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and uh, also with us is Tom McAvee, who is uh, uh, also from so. the village of Southampton. Correct. Okay, and. Uh, let me tell you first that I would like you to tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what your background is. So we'll start with you, Tom. All right. Well, thank you very much, Phyllis, for having us on. Um, Bob and I are very much teamed up on a program called Operation Big Red Box. And, and must be this you're it talking must, about. It is absolutely well, and this. That's a pretty big red box. <laughs> it is. And um, to tell you a little bit about um, how we got to this point and, and my background, is that uh, about two years ago, my wife and I moved from upstate New York to the village of Southampton. Do tell us the name of your original town. <laughs> Horseheads, New York. Horseheads. Horseheads, New York. It's near Elmira, south of Ithaca, in the Finger Lakes area. Phyllis, when, um, when we moved to Southampton Village, uh, um, the reason we moved here is my wife uh, took a job at Southampton Hospital. She's a physician. She's a neurologist. And um, that's why we moved here. But when we moved into the village, I was concerned about my water, the source of my water, and the quality of my water. So here's what happened. My wife went to work, and I took a glass went to the kitchen faucet and filled it up with water. I looked at the water. There were no, you know, particles, solid particles floating around in there. I smelled it. There was no offensive odor, such as chlorine or sulfur. And then I drank it, and it tasted pretty good. I said, wow, this is great. You know, we just moved to a, lo a new location. We've got great water. So then I got on the Internet and I started to investigate where this water came from. And I found out <laughs> that it came from the Suffolk County Water Authority. All right, oh. that was the first place. So I... <clears throat> I, I bet you thought it was a part of Suffolk County. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I downloaded their uh, water quality report. And when I, I read it cover to cover, all 38 pages of it, and word for word, but when I got to page six, I had a moment. And it was not a senior moment, Phyllis. <laughs> it was a oh my goodness moment. Uh, it was an alarming moment because on page six, it said that the Suffolk County Water Authority had closed one of their wells because it was contaminated with medications. So, well, there was a list of medications, six of them carbamazepine, naprobamate, naproxen, ibuprofen, gemfibrozil. Those were the medications that were identified as the reason they closed this well. So I called my wife at the hospital immediately. I said, honey, it's me. Can you tell me what carbamazepine is? She said, carbamazepine, it's used to treat bipolar disease. Why are you calling me up at the hospital and asking me what carbamazepine is? I said, I think I'm drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I always thought you were bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. My wife is board certified in neurology and psychiatry. <laughs> and she said, stop drinking it. You're crazy. Do you see how quickly my wife can make a diagnosis? Yeah, right. <laughs> wow. So I began to um, investigate this further about keeping medications out of our drinking water. And I Googled medication disposal. And what came out of that research? Bob Grisnick. Bob is a pioneer in medication disposal. And he started this back in 2009. 
Okay, Bob, so uh, you want to tell us a little bit about you first? About me first? Yes. Well, I, got a, I graduated from pharmacy school at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh. I worked for a couple of years uh, as a pharmacist, a chain pharmacist in the Pittsburgh area, and also as a medical representative for Abbott Laboratories. At that time, Vietnam was kind of gearing up, and I was going to be drafted. I didn't want to be drafted, so I joined the Air Force, and I became a pilot. And I f became an Air Force pilot. I flew cargo aircraft prior to me going to Vietnam. I went to Vietnam in 1969 in an AC-119 fixed-wing gunships. I flew 213 combat missions wow. in Vietnam. All of our missions were nighttime missions. We supported the ground troops. When I got back from Vietnam, <clears throat> I uh, had still had two more years left on my active duty stint, and um, it was time to get off of active duty. And I tried to get a job as an airline pilot back at that time in 72. They were laying people off at the time. So I decided to go back to my profession, which was pharmacy. And I bought the pharmacy in Southampton called South Thrifty Drug. So I've been a member of the community of Southampton since 1972 when I bought the pharmacy. I still own it. And um, at the same time, I joined the Air National Guard in West Hampton. And I, being a fixed-wing pilot, I tried to get a job as a fixed-wing pilot at the air base in West Hampton. They had people left over from their prior mission. The only thing available then was helicopters. So I switched over to helicopters, and I became a helicopter pilot, a rescue helicopter pilot. And I flew those from 1976 until 1995 when I retired. I was a commander there, squadron commander, chief of operations, chief, fire, uh, chief of safety, and the deputy commander for the air base. And I, when, while I was still running my pharmacy on a daily basis. But in my pharmacy, I work with the community on a daily basis. I've also been on the school board in Tuckahoe since 1982. Um, but getting back to where Tom left off in 2009, I was very concerned about the water quality also. And that's what we have to all be concerned about. We only get our water from the underground aquifers. That's what he left out of the story. That's right. Now, here's a man from upstate New York who has all kinds of water that's coming, especially around with the Finger Lakes and all of that, right. where you have melting snow and ice and stuff. That's not so here. Nope. In Long Island, it's under your feet. Well, this that's is where your water comes from. Absolutely, and this is something that I learned very much from Bob Krisnick because I'll tell you, being from upstate New York, I knew where a lot of people got their water. A lot of it was from wells, but they also get it from the uh, Great Lakes, the Finger Lakes, and I knew that New York City got their water from reservoirs in the Catskill Mountains. Absolutely. But Catskill when I, Dam. Yeah. In but, New <laughs> but when I got to Long Island, I didn't have a clue as to where the water came from. And so I, when I met up with Bob, I said, Bob, I said, where's this water come from? He says it comes from the aquifers that are underneath Long Sole Island. Sole source aquifer. Sole source aquifer. what it's called. And as a matter of fact, you're not alone. I can't tell you how many people in Long Island don't know where their water comes from. They'll say, from the tap, from my well. But they have no idea that it all comes from even Suffolk County Water Authority water comes from the same place, whether you have a well or you take their, their water. And they are a company. They are not part of Suffolk County, although they use that name. And, uh, and their water is chlorinated, by the way. It is? Yeah. Yes, it is chlorinated. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, as a matter of fact, there's the name of it. In the name of your group, Lloyd Magothy is the what? name of the... Water trust. The, of the, your water trust, yes. the first layer. Yes, there, um, there, are, there are several aquifers under uh, Long Island. There's the Lloyd Aquifer, uh, which is the deepest, just above bedrock. Yes. And then above the Lloyd Aquifer is the Magathy Aquifer, and that's yes. where we get most of our water. Yes. But then above that is the Upper Glacial Aquifer, and that's the shallow aquifer. And in Suffolk County, we have uh, about 77,000 private wells that are into the upper glacial aquifer. Um, and we also have about 350,000 septic systems. And cesspools. And cesspools. If the houses private, are older. Private cesspools, all right? And so what, um, what I discovered, and, and I learned from Bob, is that 
many people are flushing their unwanted medications uh, down the toilet as a method of disposal. And I learned from Bob that that is not a good method. And Bob had started a take-back program to prevent this flushing back in 2009. 2009. I, I, I did some research on trying to have a take-back program, and there were so many regulations with the DEA and the DEC and the Forum Pharmacy Board and things like that. It was really a hassle trying to put this program together. Well, at the end of 2009, the National Community Pharmacy Association, which is a national group, were able to put together a program working with all of the states in a take back program where we could take back medications and put them in a container, not as big a big red box, but we would get them from the Sharps company in Houston. It was a sealed container. We put the drugs in and then we mailed them back to be incinerated. At that time, we were not allowed to take back controlled medications, only other type medications. But I went one step further. I wanted to take back everything that people had in their homes. So I got the local Southampton Village Police Department. And as long as I had a police agency involved with me, we could take back everything. And so in April of 2010, I had my first take back program. Only in my pharmacy, we took back probably five or six hundred pounds of drugs. But the number that really is something is during that one day from 10 in the morning till five in the afternoon, I took back 1,144 bottles of medication that people brought into, brought into my pharmacy. And with the police department, we sorted them out, the control drugs here and the rest of the drugs here, and we took them to the incinerator up at Islip MacArthur Airport. Covanta is the name of the energy company up there. And they incinerate the drugs for us. So I have a working relationship wow. with the police department so that we can take back control drugs. The first time we did it in that April of 2010, we had a plain, police, police, plain clothes policeman in the pharmacy with us. I had three pharmacists working there, sorting out the drugs, and we put them where they were had to be, and the police took care of the controlled drugs. After that day, the other local pharmacies on the East End were listening because I broadcasted this live over WLNG radio. Yes. I had them in for five hours. We did a live broadcast. We had the police uh, chief in there talking about how they find met drugs in teenagers' cars. Where does it come from? It comes from the medicine cabinet at home. I had the group from the South Fork come in and talk about environment and you know what's happening when the water gets done. I also had North Six Sanitation because they pump the cesspools. And then they take the cesspools up to the scavenger plant up on the Peconic River, you know, and it's treated, but the effluent still goes back into the Peconic Bay. And there are still drugs getting into the Peconic Bay and they're finding mouth formations of fish and things like that. So that afternoon, I also had uh, the Alternatives Counseling Center from the East End come in and talk about how they counsel people who are dependent on medication. So that afternoon, the whole afternoon was a learning experience for the community that they listened on the radio. It went over so well that the other pharmacies on the East End called me and said, Bob, are you gonna do this again? I says, I sure am, I'm gonna do it in six months. The first time we did it was in April during Earth Week. Then we did it again in November. When the November time frame came, I had all of the East End independent pharmacies with me. We had 13 pharmacies on the Take Back program on that particular day. And that day we took back over about 1,200 pounds of drugs amongst the 13 pharmacies. Wow. And so there is where we have gone since then. We have had Two in 2010, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Over the four year period that we've done this now, we have incinerated seven tons, 14,000 pounds of little bottles of medication, whether they're prescription or over the counter oh type drugs. God. Phyllis, I, yeah, I had volunteered at Bob's uh, pharmacy to help with the take back program, and um, my eyes were 
opened. I mean, it's amazing. People go out of their way and they bring in bags of medication that they had needlessly stored in their medicine cabinet for years. In fact, when I was talking to um, a lady uh, out here on the East End about this project, she said, you know, my husband died of cancer 12 years ago, and during his battle with cancer, he accumulated a tremendous amount of medication. When he passed away, I gathered up all the medication, put it in a bag, and put it in, underneath the bathroom sink. 12 years later, it's still there. I said, ma'am, you're going to be the first person in line when we get this big red box going. Now, I want to mention this. I'm a retired banker and my wife is a hard-working physician. So when she came home after I discovered that we had these medications possibly in the water, she said to me, uh, you know, you ought to really find something to do. And um, if you want to keep medications out of our uh, water, go do it. So, you know, um, she was not so thrilled with the retired part of retired banker. <laughs> and she, she really encouraged me to get together with this guy, Bob Get busy. Krisnick. Do get something. Get busy, exactly. Get out of my hair. And I said, Bob, I said, you know, you're a pioneer. I want to be involved with this. Let's team up and get something done. And so that's what we did. We designed this big red box, which, is, which complies with the Drug Enforcement Administration's regulations. And Bob and I said, you know, we need to get one of these in every retail pharmacy that we can. We're going to start local, but who knows where we end up. So we, um, we had several of these manufactured. They're manufactured in Ronkonkoma, by the way. And uh, we're trying to push... Not China? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to um, uh, come up with the funding that's needed to uh, facilitate this and implement Operation Big Red Box. Um, Bob has a lot of connections and he's helping. Uh, but we, we'd ask that, um, you know, if your viewers have an interest in supporting um, Operation Big Red Box, we'd love to talk to some of your viewers. Well, that sounds wonderful. Now, I, I want to understand, are you telling me now that any drugs that I have in my house, I can take to my local pharmacist? Uh. Not exactly. <laughs> you could bring it to my pharmacy yeah. because as of October the 9th, I was the first pharmacy in the country to register with the D, uh, DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency, as a collector of all medications. First one in the country. So my big red box you can bring back anything you have in your house and put into my box because I am a registered collector with the DEA to take back all medications. So how do we get other people to be? I mean, let's face it, some people are not going to drive to Southampton no. from East Hampton. We, we are, that's, that's why Tom and I are here to talk about that. We are, we've created this trust, a 501c3, to raise funds to build these boxes and to put them in every local pharmacy throughout. We're starting on the East End, then into Suffolk County, Nassau County, the state of New York, and we've already had inquiries from outside the state about this big red box. Well, you guys really have a plan. We do, <laughs> and we do. But we are committed to this. You know, this is something that, especially on the East End, you know, I've got 13, I had 17 pharmacies that participated at one time or another in this, the local independents. Four of them have gone out of business in the last four years. So we still have 13, and every one of them want one of these boxes. So we're trying to find the funding to manufacture these boxes, put them into every pharmacy, and then be able to seal them up, send them back to a reverse wholesaler, and then back to the incinerator company to burn them up, environmentally safe, create energy out of it because that's what happens with the, the one in Islip. They sell them energy back to uh, the, the LIPA, you know, or I guess whatever the name is now. But anyway. <laughs> whatever it is. Whatever it is. Sure Local yet. LIPA, right, yeah. It's, it's PSEG. PSEG, <laughs> uh, Long Island. That's what it is right now. Uh, I forgot. But anyway, that's th what the whole thing is. We are going to have one of these boxes in every pharmacy. And this, we're right at the beginning stages right now. You know, we have one here. We have a big red box also in the Southampton Village Police Department. We have another big red box at the Senior Citizen Center in 
oh, East Hampton. Very important In place. East Hampton. And the East Hampton Town Police are the ones that take care of that big red box out in East Hampton. And that box was sponsored by the Rotary Club. The Rotary Club donated $1,500 to buy that box. We have their name on the front of the box that's saying we donated this. So that's another thing. We're looking for organizations to donate $1,500 to our 501c3 tax deductible water trust so that we can manufacture these boxes and put them into every pharmacy on the east end and then move west into Suffolk County. Well, I hope everybody who is listening or, you know, the show is on four times during the course of a week. Okay. And so there'll be a variety of different people that will be listening to this. Understand that not just because we have our sole source aquifer, but water in itself has now, as I mentioned to you before, become the new gold of this world. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see, I have family living out in California, oh, and I can tell you, you know, they are really hard pressed there for water. And that's going to be, you know, the global warming stuff is really starting to affect us in many ways, and one of them is water. And I know I, you mentioned group for the South Fork, which is now group for the East End. Right. Yeah. And I've had Bob DeLuca here yes. on several occasions, and we've talked about quality of water and how important it is. And we have to do things. I mean, we have to stop with all of the difference. But this is something that I think people don't quite realize. You know, if you're putting down some chemical on your lawn, you, you have a little bit more understanding of mm -hmm. it. But to take your medication and just toss it into the toilet, you know, that's, that takes a, a another whole step of knowledge. It does. And, and you know, um, when I was learning about this, I found out that um, hospice has a decision tree for uh, disposal of medications. And in their uh, recommendations, there is a point in their decision tree where it says flush it down the toilet. So I did write to the national organization, and I pointed this out, and they said, we're going to recalibrate our, <laughs> our decision okay. uh, tree. But also, the Food and Drug Administration has a list of 31 medications that they recommend flushing. Yes, your jaw oh. is dropping the way my jaw is oh. dropping. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm retired, looking for something to do, and this is something maybe I can contribute my time and, and do something good. Uh, for the community. I, I don't and we understand are... why anybody would say that. I mean, I, right here even on, on the East End, I, I'm even careful with what, what products I use to clean with. I mean, yes. I clean a lot with white vinegar, you know. I mean, I, I'm so careful about what goes into the, my, my water system because, and, and everybody, as everybody should, you know. I mean, I rarely, rarely use Clorox. I mean, maybe once every seven or eight months do I use Clorox in my wash, and I use only the kind of uh, detergents that are not, you know, really horrible. Uh, well, well, I think the mentality, the thinking is changing uh, since 2009 when Bob started this uh, uh, program here, and, and people are becoming more aware of it. So not only do we have to uh, raise the awareness that flushing medications is not a good idea, we have to provide a functioning okay. system to, uh, that is free and convenient so a person can walk into a pharmacy, walk up to a big red box, dispose of it responsibly, have it incinerated, and it's done. You know, there's also a societal issue here. I've been on the school board, as I mentioned to you, since 1982. Children are a big part of my life every day when I'm on that board, and the most abused, second most abused drug with teenagers is pharmaceuticals that they find in the house behind marijuana. Also, every year, 71,000 children overdose on either prescriptions or over-the-counter drugs because those drugs are sitting at home, they're inquisitive, they take something off the shelf, and they try it. So the, we're trying to tell people, don't leave things around your home, take them out, take them back. There are take back programs, not just ours, but the police departments also have boxes in there, uh, especially in Suffolk County, you know, and uh, the, the DEA had a program a couple of times a year where they did it at the end of September because pharmacies now can take back, if you register with the DEA, 
The DEA has stopped their take back program. September 27th was the last time they did the program. They quit. So it's fallen back on the local pharmacies. And that's why we really need to work hard to get this program. DEA means department. The Drug Enforcement, Enforcement. Ad Enforcement. Drug Enforcement Administration, right. which is the division of the Department of Justice. Yeah, the DEA. And you know, um, a lot of people think that the DEA is involved with, um, you know, the uh, heroin, uh, cocaine smugglers from uh, South America. But actually, they, they have a diversion program, up, uh, and, it, and that's very important. Bob mentioned societal. I'll give you this number. 20,000 people per year die from prescription drugs. 16,000 people die per year from heroin and cocaine. So 60 per day from prescription drugs, 40 per day from heroin and cocaine. So prescription I, drugs. You know, very briefly, we were coming, I was driving here today and they have Science Friday is on as I'm driving and the guy was talking about how he went into, in, in Europe, he went into a, um, a homeopathic place he wanted to, you know, he was having some headaches or something, and he went in some place and wanted something. And the guy said to him, you're an American. You only take drugs, which is true. We have become a pill-popping society, and we need to get past a lot of that. And, you know, one of the problems is, is that our uh, physicians are not as educated on these kinds of things about prevention and addictions and things like that. Gentlemen, it was absolutely mind-boggling. I wish you lots of luck Thank in you. what you are doing and anything else we can do to help. I hope they have an email up there somewhere where they, people can get in touch with you. Okay, great. Because that's very important. We have to see more of these around so we can easily, easily find a way of, of getting rid of the medications that are hanging around our houses. Thank you very much Thank for having you. us. Thank you.